Vodafone presents the pre-match. Indeed it does, as we welcome you back to Birmingham, England. England's second city for ESL 1 Birmingham. Day number one of five as we present our first ever UK major. One million dollars on the line and plenty of DPC points as well. For the Dota professional circuit, as well as all of these things that are up for grabs right now, including the iconic ESL 1 trophy, which the next two teams would love to get their grubby mitts on as well. It is two teams who have been in very good form over the last few months. Indeed, one of one a major and the other one's one a minor. Two teams that no one expected, perhaps at the start of the season, to be picking up either of those. It's Mineski versus Optic Gaming, and we're back at the panel once more to preview the match ahead of us. Nahaz is with us alongside Capitalist. Uh, Alan, it's quite an interesting little matchup, this one, yeah. between two kind of, not, I wouldn't say perfectly informed teams because they're not right now, but in the last two months alone, we've had DAC Championship winning for Mineski and we've also had Starlight Championship win for Optic. And it was kind of, we were waiting to see whether they were going to produce something in a minor or something in a major, and they've both done that now. So are they both in the running for the DPC? Obviously, Mineski in fifth right now, so they look good. Very much but are Optic so. there as well? I I mean, I think Optic know that they come into these last two tournaments knowing that they need a big result to yeah. play themselves into that top eight. But I think two things, right? When we last saw these teams, the only series they played all year was at DAC, Mineski 2 0 Optic, and those two games total took less than an hour. It was not a close series. It was like, I think the combined kill score was like 53 to 11 in those two games. Optic has come a long way since then. Love the way we're drafting about 33. We talked about that. Yeah. But both of these two teams have to be looking at the names that have already exited this tournament and potentially newbie gone as well and thinking, why not us? Yeah, and we can get a hat full of points here, regardless of what happens. Uh, Mineski is certainly going to be looking to try and secure that, that top five spot that they've got right now. Mm. Um, and let's talk about them, um, Cam. It, it, when you think back to the start of the DPC season, I remember thinking, Blimey, these guys have got some potential. They they yep. finished second in the first tournament. They won the, the second tournament as well. And you think, where have they come from? How have they got this good? Order? And then they just disappeared off the face of the earth. Something stuck with me, um, gents, in January. We were in Genting for ESL 1. And I said to Darrow, I said to him, what is wrong with you guys? Why, where has it gone from the start of the season? Why have you? And he said, we just need a new patch. Are they st and it stuck yeah, with me because right. when we had that patch at DAC, they were on fire during that tournament. Uh, it had a lot less to do with a new patch than it did a new coach and a new Indeed. play style. Yeah, and I think uh, all of those things, isn't it, Cap? Isn't it a combination of all of the things? You know, good patch. Yeah. We had heroes released into the pool like Pango, for instance, which Ice 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 had been playing really well. His is pretty much the standard build on that hero now. And then they had a good coach come in and they'd started to rejuvenate and they'd had good practice. Like, mixture of all those things coming in, perfect storm? Yeah, I, I think it is a bit of a perfect storm. They certainly benefited from the patch change at DAC. I think they also being able to bring in a coach feels like that they were out drafting their opponents. Um, maybe it's just the extra analytical insight that they had available to them that they were able to just figure out the patch faster right. than some of the other teams. But it does seem like this is going to be a continual trajectory for Mineski. I think they're gonna re uh, remain pretty relevant within that like top six area okay. um, is kind of where I'd place them as a team right now. Not, right. not quite the full top three they won sure. one major but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they need to be able to, to secure a lot more in my mind to be able to shake up the current dynamic of dota 2 um, where liquid and vp are still holding the yeah, top indeed dogs. um the other thing about this team as well we should inform people that aren't regular viewers of dota 2 is that actually when they came off dac they then had a vacation alan and then came back to the tournament system and they were a bit rusty, yeah, weren't they? They, they admitted they were a bit like, we're not quite sure of the new patch and we've had time off and we haven't practiced. So so no more excuses now because they should be settled again. Well, it's a it's a big tournament for them because to me, I get a lot of questions recently about uh, our LGD your favorites for TI. And, and my answer to that, despite they have looked like the best team in Dota in the last couple of tournaments, no question. But my answer to that is still no, because to me, to be a favorite for TI, you've got to be on top and you've got to get figured out and you've got to come back from that. And Mineski, to me, it's a, such a huge tournament for them, despite effectively being in, the combination of things that would have to happen for them to not sure. be in top eight is huge, but they have a chance to show, no, DAC was not a one-off fluke. And that's why VP and Liquid remain in like the kind of top spot, right? Is for that me, they have absolutely. remained top form constantly and teams have studied them and they still manage to stay ahead of yeah. the curve. They've both had events where it looks like, hey, they might be getting figured out mm -hmm. and they've come back from that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and a team has got to get more than 2,000 points that's even close to them right now, which is basically right. winning a major. So <laughs> uh, it's going to take quite a lot for them to get out. But I would imagine, knowing that they've got a potentially good route if they can get past Optic Gaming to finishing in a top four would, would spur them on here. Uh, as we head into and this uh, best of three. And I just, I think in when you're a team like like Mineski, uh, I think your focus in an event like this has to be on you. It has to be mm -hmm. on improving. It has to be on building toward TI because you're going to have, assuming you do finish top eight, which is almost assured, you're going to have eight weeks off to scrim. Yep. You need to focus on getting better now. That's a good point. Um, I also want to point out that we do have stream B up and running. Uh, that is the battle between the other two teams in this group. It's Newbie versus LFY. Uh, and I, I dread to even think about this, but we could have a scenario at the end of this day where we've lost Evil Geniuses, Vici Gaming, and Newbie from the first day, all eliminated in the first day. I, I, it's extraordinary that we've lost those other two already. What did, uh, what did Notel say? He was a rough format. Rough format, indeed. As many of these teams are going to be going out quite early. It's pretty brutal, that's for sure, uh, if you don't get it right on day one. And I have to say, you know, Evil Geniuses have been one of those teams in the past. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised. They don't start well uh, in tournaments, and this particular format is uh, quite punishing for them in particular. Uh, they're gone alongside Vigi Gaming, as we said. Newbie Yalafy is on Stream B right now. Open that up on the uh, second screen if you want. Stay with us here on the main one, because we've got a great game ahead of us. Uh, best of three between Optic and Mineski, two clash of styles. As Alan mentioned earlier on in the preview, they have met uh, back at DAC, and both of those games were pretty stompy. Yeah. As far as Mineski was concerned, uh, in a positive sense. So Optic will have that in the back of their mind, Cap, I guess, a little bit. Maybe. Uh, again, I agree with Alan, where he said that this team has definitely come a long way. I'm a bit concerned about Mineski, because uh, Mineski, <laughs> they picked this anime hero. Yeah, and, and and they managed to beat LFY, which is which is great and everything. Uh, LFY yeah. is is not a bad time, uh, bad team, but uh, it does it does make me kind of wonder about their ideas uh, for drafting for this current patch, and whether or not they are going to bring something uh, something different from even what we saw at MDL. Oh. Because I felt like at MDL they were kind of running what I expected. Right, they're running some slark carries. They were picking up Doom. They're running a lot of Dragonite. Like that's kind of what I expect out of this patch. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, hopefully fix the draft for you in a moment, but we'll radio it in for you now. We've got a Bane, Kunkka opening for Optic, and a Shadow Demon Luna start for Minesky. Wow, a lot of teams valuing the Shadow Demon here yeah. today, which I'm I'm still not quite sure what to think of. Uh, on paper, the stats would tell you it's pretty bad. Uh, Bam, why is Optic banned out the? Uh... The Furion, the Gyro, and the DP. Yeah. The Mineski, uh, oh, there we go. Key right. is the Gyro band because uh, Gyro was the hero that beat them. But Mineski played the same lineup twice against them at yeah. DAC. And the key to me, uh, Gyro is Mushi's best hero right now. And when you put him off the Gyro, they will often get in these situations where, where Mushi starts playing very greedy again. And they start to look like what they look like early in the season. Yeah. So the band, the, band the Gyro take the Conquer as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think uh, Luna is just like uh, a, a pretty decent copy paste to the gyrocopter. Um, the hero is like uh, a little bit more farm oriented. Yeah. Doesn't have to have such a strong laning phase because it can fall back on jungle a little bit more naturally where gyrocopter is a lot more active. And it will lead into that question of how, how greedy is Mushi gonna be playing this hero. They already have the shadow demon with it as well, which really makes me think that Mushi's gonna try and put himself in a position where he is the be all end all carry of this game. Um, that combination is just simply so strong. Uh, Shadow Demon makes a great ally with the Luna. But Optic, I mean, they've taken this laning phase. I, I think that's going to be their goal with this early Bane pickup. I was expecting more Banes, honestly, because it is uh, such a, a focus on the fives and fours that can give you really strong dual lanes, and Bane is hard to beat in that regard. Oh, and I think, it, it again, it's just you, you see so many Lunas, Gyrocopters, Medusas, these sort of spread damage carries that Enfeeble, that like to buy BKB, and that Enfeeble does so much work on in the mid game. And the, the Kunkka's going to be 
uh, maybe not as effective, but I think it, it's going to be nearly as effective uh, against a Luna as it is against a Gyrocopter. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the same concept of, like, they both bring this really heavy magic damage focus to a team fight, very heavy burst. If you could get the ship in first, the Cocos Rum is yes, so rum. good against Again, it. Again, what we've seen in the past couple of tournaments against these spread damage cores is the power of damage mitigation. Your mm -hmm. rum, your pipes, your early Crimson, Crimson Guards. guards. Yeah. yeah. Super Nick, strong. Nick Stepic. That that oh, Nick Stepic feels a little bit premature to me. Yeah. Um, uh, there's no. I, I mean, obviously, you you do have some interaction with the with the Bane Kunkka combo, but it's not like there's a there's a hero in the game like a Leshrac that or or a Bat Rider that screams, "Hey, Nick is a good pick here." What did we say? It was uh, who who played the Nick's assassin earlier against the the Leshrac? It, like a uh, newbie, right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing was is that they were running a Naga Siren that wasn't an LGD Naga Siren, and they were running a Nyx Assassin, which wasn't a Southeast Asian Nyx Assassin. Yes. That's the thing. All the C teams are super good with Nyx, so I'm kind of okay with it. It pairs with the, the Shadow Demon, so you've got this nice uh, combo stun um, that can make this a very threatening duo. Um, so maybe we're not going to be seeing the the dual lane focus. Maybe these supports are going to be playing together. I'm not sure how good that is, oh. because it puts a focus on roaming with it, those two. But and, I mean, roaming can work, but the way the economy of Dota works right now is that the, the the relative value of kills compared to just CS in the early game is so low mm -hmm. that you, the onus is so haha is so strongly on you uh, to execute in these rotations. If you miss one or two rotations, the the, the opportunity cost of that is just massive right now so uh i was thinking of different same kind of hero and that the auras are very effective uh against the luna oh, yeah. i was thinking of like the underlord uh and the damage mitigation that you get from that hero but instead they're gonna go for the elder titan which is equally effective against a lot of these agility carries um mm. for more offensive purposes and we got a yeah. brew uh which hmm. they need a hero that ignores the kind of lockdown that kunkka um mm -hmm. gives you and is just able to force team fights upon the enemy team i think brewmaster is equally good against the naga siren type lineups for the same reason yeah, so what, I mean, offline brew the big thing right is yeah. that is that luna to me luna is a hero that until she gets uber farm needs a frontliner to play behind and these two supports neither of them neither of them are going to give you that frontliner yeah. so you needed a core and, just, so the nix is now a four right yes yes yeah and um and that's what we were kind of talking about in the in the duo interaction. So we kind of thought it was going to be Nyx 4 um, to start things off. The Brewmaster, a, I, I totally agree with Alan. The other thing it gives you is Lockdown, which oh, yeah. I think is super important for Aluna to, to be able to get in there with her Eclipse to be effective. You've got two different really good disables. One's the, the stone on a little cooldown, and then the other one is that Tornado um, that you can dispel to bring back down to Earth for an easy kill. So... Uh, Again, I think Optic is really going to focus on being able to win the, the laning phase and yes. take the timing away from Brewmaster who needs a Blink Dagger, uh, maybe even a Soul Ring before that. You, you've you got this Luna who needs to be able to farm up and eventually get the, the Yasha BKB sort of thing, so. I just feel like in we've talked already a couple of times. I feel like in so many in so many respects through four picks, Mineski have placed a lot of burden on themselves to execute. In the laning phase, I don't mm -hmm. think these are necessarily going to give you the strongest lanes against what Optic is going to be able to bring. Uh, and, and I just I think it's a great team fight lineup if you execute it really well. Yeah. But it's not easy. And it feels like uh, again the Optic set this. Uh, I think pretty early on in their ideas that they were not going to be giving CC and C like this really great matchup pick. Um, they kind of left him out to dry in that regard. He had a lot of bad matchups. With 33 coming in, oh. they really enable him. Like, so they, they, they took that like kind of leap and said, you know, CC, we're, we're going to give you like these heroes that are just kind of like good in the meta, but you're going to get countered and that's going to be kind of your yep, business. Yep. And that sucks. But it's going to enable the superstar player that we have in 33. This last pick from Optic is going to be like kind of the, the game defining pick. Yeah, and it's it's just so it's such a luxury, right? Because all of a sudden, at the same time they brought 33 in, the main heroes for CCNC started to show from other teams that they were viable in the sideline. So all of a sudden, you could be picking these these death prophets, uh, these DKs, these razors, and if it was a bad matchup, you just throw them in the sideline yeah. and put 33 mid on a micro hero like a brood or a visage. Speaking of, oh no, it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I was, was like, eh, I was like pretty good visage. Game. I was yeah. thinking that myself, but yep. It was one of those, yeah, no. It's me. It's probably not a great brood game, but we always have to talk about that with Optic. Um, 
is it is it a good puck game for uh, them? Yeah, I I, like I, I, I think they need uh they don't want a little bit too late. Um, they want a hero that comes online pretty quickly. I I actually love Puck Et as an aggro duel. I think that yeah. I think that lane, especially coming down from the dire side, contesting on Radiant, uh, can control those side camps. Get Et his damage up. He can just walk up and be hitting you in the face. You know what the funny thing is? I think it actually works for both sides. Okay. I think All it right. actually works for Mineski as well. The Underlord, which we actually brought up damage earlier. Damage mitigation. Yeah. 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 And uh, some taxi service available for Optic. Uh, let's see where Mineski go then for pick number five. Optics lineup feels like it's um, it, it's going to be very much about playing around your towers. Like I'm not yep. sure if this lineup is going to be able to take a whole lot of aggro um, and really force a lot of action on this uh, this Luna and Brewmaster, but they will be able to protect their towers yeah. and give this time so, uh, to Morphling. They're going to be able to, they're going to be able to protect their towers and they're going to be able to take your towers when you screw up. Mm -hmm. And so far, they have the better late game. So it's a solid foundation. Yeah, all they have is this Nyx Assassin to um, get the Vendetta hit out of Invis in order to threaten a Morphling who's split pushing you, right? Like, so far, that's all they have to really threaten a Morphling. So is this is this going to be Brew mid and you pick an offlaner, or are we going to go back for a mid here? Um, it's going to be interesting, because they haven't played Brews in 7-11, by the way. So they do have the option. Kunk is kind of a, a problem for a lot of heroes, because I yes. think you want an assassin-type hero that can threaten the Morphling, and you also have a good matchup uh, against in the Kunkka. There, If there wasn't a Kunkka, I would say, like, the, the Lina. I, I still think the Puck works for them as well. Uh, what about what about you just go go back to the standard Dragonite, and you just go, let's, let's just push? Sure. Uh, you, you're going to have cores, right? The Brewmaster, DK, Nyx Assassin is a support that can't be targeted. Like, you have so many heroes yeah. that can't really be targeted by the shotgun that I, I like that concept. Yeah, I, I think you just pick something pick something fairly tanky for your mid laner here and just just run at their towers. Could, because as you said, Optic is a team that they're not really going to be taking fights on your side of the map until you sort of mess up a couple of times. It definitely feels like there's uh, multiple options here for... Yeah, Nasty, exactly, though. exactly. They got their last pick, and it's not showing up for us. Yeah, so they, they, they know. They know what they Timbersaw. want to play. Timbersaw. Hmm. So they, okay. they, oh, they picked up Timbersaw, Timbersaw yep. against Morphling. The pure yeah. damage is up against uh, Kunkka in the laning phase. Super strong. Yeah, I think I like that. And then the the Underlord, another strength hero. That's pretty value. Yeah, I'm 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 down with this Mineski draft. I, I, I think these drafts are, are, I mean, relative to what we've seen in a lot of these, uh, these best of threes, a lot of lopsided series. I think this has a good chance to go 2-1. Okay. Yeah, I think that the, I'm not I'm not fully convinced by Optic's lineup. I, I can't really see yeah. a, a great win condition for them. It's it just all kind of like getting this Morphling to the late game. But I think, again, this Morphling doesn't have good targets for the shotgun. Yeah. So. Fairly even, but I'll go Mineski. Yeah, same right. here. Okay, all right. Very narrow, very close, very tight, apparently, as we head in towards game number one. So let's bring in our commentary team. Uh, Toby One and Purge are waiting for us. Gents, uh, Mineski are seven and one in uh, the last three months on when they've used Nick. So do they have an edge? Maybe, maybe. Can I, can I just ignore stats because Nahas is on the panel right now? That's that's all I really yeah, want yeah, to do. Yeah, his mic's S muted. S seven and one means nothing. He's yeah, you're right. He's muted. He can't he can't even fight back. He's pretty loud though. He might he might get picked up on the mic if he starts talking in a normal voice for him. <laughs> never know. It's true. Lessons we learned from the green room. Um, <laughs> so what do you think, Evan? You you had a, you had a pretty serious face as the uh, as the draft was unfolding. Yeah, uh, I think one of the cool things about Mineski is the way they actually play Shadow Demon. Um, the the match that they played earlier today, they played very effectively and in this game they keep kind of getting what they need out of it like for shadow demon to be good you need disruption to be able to counteract the strong things that your opponents do and a hero like kunkka that's perfect because he's going to go for an x torrent combo you can disrupt your core counteract what kunkka does and then turn things around ideally so there's, there's cool things like that that shadow demon does well yeah and of course obviously sd is the old-fashioned combination with the luna to allow yep. for the easy push. What do you like about the like the Timbersaw pickup at the very end? It is uh, it is Moon on the Timbersaw as well, not the signature Ice Ice Ice, but... Uh well, like they clarified, there's a lot of heroes that are weak to pure damage, like Timbersaw. There's a bunch of strength heroes between the Kunkka and the Underlord, normally heroes that are difficult to kill. And against Morphling, pure damage is also good because he's got so much armor that even physical damage doesn't work out the best, and some kind of like pure burst is yep. great. And you can lower his primary stat, which is agility, which is what he has tons and tons of. So, Is yeah. it also like one of the few heroes that can probably match up against the Kunkka in the mid lane? Yeah. Because uh, uh, that was the other thing I was wondering, but like, like who do you pick against the Kunkka? 
Well, uh, Morphling is not going to be their most likely pike will go safe lane, but um, Timbersaw works fine. And that's yeah. a, a lot of the reason why they pick him. Um, a lot of players pick this hero because he's one of those like 1v1 matchup abusers. Because once you get enough stacks of reactive armor, nobody can harass you, at least if you're in a lot of 1v1 matchups. And then you just do whatever you want. You harass your opponent, and then you continue your lane as you desire. Well, here comes the rune contesting. So Ninja Boogie scouting out Zai. Jabs as well as Ice 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 are already waiting for him. So they start with a clap, follow up into that impale. Ninja Boogie still right behind him. But Zai, OK, disruption. They're trying to just lock him in. It's the Warcraft 3 surround as Zai, he's got the distance on them. Stuns off cooldown in two seconds, one second. Ice, 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 I'll have to follow up instantly with a clamp and keep him controlled underneath the tower. It will be enough. Maneski will spill the first blood up on the top lane and it will be two bounty runes apiece as well. And Pikehead is forced to run circles over here so he can get to his creep wave, but Eventually, he's going to be successful here, yeah, and he's going to be forced to use his teleport scroll just to get to his own lane. Damn it! That's uh, that's not what you want to do, <laughs> especially nope. if you had any intention of lane rotating. Well, it, it's okay. He's not going to want to rotate out of his lane. He's the carry. He's got to get last hits. He's going to be just fine here. Yeah. Fifty gold lost. Yep. So then they look for the uh, the collateral, which can come down a bottom lane. Thirty three as well as PPD up against this SD and Luna combination. This is actually really good for Optic now because Ninja Boogie was forced to cast Disruption to try to guarantee the kill on the Elder Titan. So now he can actually zone his opponent very well. And Bane, one of the reasons he's been banned so often is because he just lanes so amazingly well. Great armor, great right click, great movement speed. And he can heal himself while dealing damage with Brain Sap, which makes his lane pressure just massive. Mm -hmm. And with, with Disruption on Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon can't match that. It seems like a very weird time for Ice 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 just to have to sit in the trees up on top lane. Because uh, Jabs has pulled an entire creep wave to the tier 2 tower on top. He was chased there by Zai, but it's kind of left Ice 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 in no man's land until he's been able to now pull off to the side. It's just a lot safer to grab these creep waves and to pull them in the middle of nowhere, because if, if you meet it with another creep wave, you can deny some of those creeps, and the carry's not going to cross the map behind the tier 1 to go for those last hits, so it, it gives you a little bit of a lane advantage, and it's a good thing to do on these melee supports. PPD keeping the harassment on Mushi. He knew the SD wanted to back up and do the pull. So, Mushi alone, and maybe now they can dive. You actually have that Firestorm available with the, with the aura. Yeah, they, uh, they try and make sure this creep wave stays alive going underneath the tower. Mushi cutting through the trees into Boogie. There's your disruption. So, Mushi, he's got another Lucid Beam. PPD underneath the tower. Still has the Brain Zap available, but now the Firestorm from 33 TP support is finally coming in here from Optic, and it's Jabs arriving under the cover of an Invis rune. He's looking for something to stun PPD and 33. They're lining up nicely. He'll Ooh. get the double stun done and they've actually got the catcher as well putting it onto ppd the damage will be high but ppd one more hit from mushi will do it as 33 already gets the kill onto ninja boogie jabs and mushi finish off ppd that was so well done by optic the glyphing of the creep wave to give them that uh potential to dive i mean they're, they're just pressuring luna right now she's out of region she's got one tango left and she needs like four to full heal so Optic getting done what they need to, and pulling Nyx Assassin all the way down here means that the other lane is going to be more protected. Thanks to the other Courier. Uh, they bought Tangos and put it onto Ninja Boogie, so the regenerations come back from Mushi. But it's going to take time to regen up. How's the other lanes looking? Looks like Moon and CCNC are pretty even. How's this top lane going now that they've pulled SD off it? Well, it looks like Pycat actually doesn't have the best last hits. He's got eight right now, probably because Isis Ice has been up in his face since the lane started. Um, so it looks like things are okay here for, for Maneski. Pretty even across the board, though. Yeah, just drunk and haze them up. It's 16-5 it's, uh, versus the 8-0. So not the greatest on that front, but as you said, bottom lane's working nicely for yep. now. They're getting the trade-off, basically. They're, the Maneski is not doing so well in the safe lane, but they're really owning the off lane right now. It's taunted quite a few times. It's got to be at least eight by now. That's also a big scoreboard measure. It doesn't get tracked, but it's important. Bottom lane, disruptions out, follow up stun. Mushi, the help is trying to come in from 33 to save PPD. It won't happen for 33. Now focusing towards Mushi, doesn't have that extra real big bonus damage. They're only at 15 at the moment. Loose and beam, they have a mango. If they want to commit it, this will allow Jabs to get the follow up stun. Exactly what happens. And Mushi will have a double kill for this safe lane. I mean, I don't think Maneski necessarily anticipated this, but they're trialing you right now, and it's working out really well. I mean, Brewmaster's already winning his off lane anyways. You don't want to commit this tri lane because it means that you're not going to do so well in the opposite lane. But with Aluna, they've got three heroes to right click. Shadow Demon doesn't do that much damage himself. And Shadow Demon with Nyx, they're going to facilitate each other. So it's working out really well. Yeah. And Ice 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 isn't losing out. He just pulled another creep wave. So again, the Equilibrium is kind of being thrown around on the top lane. He's going to hit level five here. And we're only four minutes into the game. 
It's been a good day to actually abandon the lane to give him those extra levels. PPD wants to come back down at bottom, but Jabs sees the rotation coming and wants to keep rotating himself. 33 is in very, very deep with Ninjabuki rotating over. They got the two points up in the Soul Catcher, so no points up in anything else. They want to have that amplification available, and Jabs, okay, they're just happy to let Mushi have the space. They don't have the creep wave with them because they pulled it up before. Yeah, if you can get away with getting two Soul Catcher like this on Shadow Demon, it, you actually do a lot of damage as a hero, but you need to amplify some other kind of damage. Here you go, Disruption, catch it, Jabs. Wow, that's not actually connected. Thought for a half a second, it was too early. But the damage on the PPD, Stick Charges gives him a little bit more life. Up the hill, missed chances of kicking in. And Ninja Boogie, without the Shadow Poison, cannot get the range to find a kill. But top lane, Ice 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 running back to the Shrine, will trigger it. And the Adaptive Strike from Pycat was not enough to put down the Brewmaster. Two early points of Adaptive Strike on Pycat, too. He's really trying to uh, guarantee these kills, but... Either way, a little bit of lane stabilization for Mineski now. Luna's been free to hit creeps. And 3-3 uh, three has also picked up level 4, really? so everybody's pretty much happy right now. Ice 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 is actually forcing Pycat out. Pycat doesn't have boots. He went for the Aquila, so Ice 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 knows he's got the movement speed on him. Cloud's going to come off cooldown as well, so Zai starts the stomp. One more hit from Brewmaster will do it, and Zai, he does have boots, but Drunken Hate's also available. Pycat creates space. And Ice 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 just owns this top lane no at the moment. This is like standard Ice Ice Ice. Maybe bottom lane, Nightmare into the pit with the Firestorm as well. Ninja Boogie goes to the disruption. He goes onto the Underlord with it. I mean, the Ninja Boogie can run back behind that tier one tower. A little costly for him. He's going to have to go run back to heal unless, uh, yeah, Nyx has no heals. Well, it gives him a tango. They're going to stick around for a bit. That means they could set up a kill here. Disruption potentially into a stun with Luna follow up. But either way, if, as long as it's Shadow Demon getting pressured, it's not that big of a deal for Vanessa because they just want to make sure that Luna can grab farm and that 3 3 doesn't get to uh, just completely dominate this lane. Yeah. Well, so far it's pretty even for the farm between 33 as well as uh, Mushi. But you're right. Ninja Boogie wants to hang around. Disruption and Catcher would be fantastic for them. Thanks to PPD's ward, they also see quite well just into this small little pocket to the west of the south of oh, the bottom lane. Top lane, Zion gonna go for the stomp. Ice Ice Ice, however, just splits it. Has the stun, should have the damage available to kill off Zai if he just wants to just focus down this one hero, Ooh. which is exactly what happened. So goodbye, E.T. He read him right on the juke path there. And not too unexpected for, for him to be able to get that kill with the fast six and the way that he's been playing his lane. So doesn't even have low HP. He stays in the lane. He's getting denies and last hits. Want the pits down once more, trying to go after Luna. Mushi doesn't get secondary stunned. Ninja Boogie does not have any kind of disruption available. CC and C looking for the torrent. Mushi just runs straight back up again. Meanwhile, up on top lane. No spike carapace for the Knicks to reflect that damage. And a it waste might really rotation. matter anyway. A little interesting that he rotated there. Probably thought he could get something done, but kind of wish that he just went top instead. That's the guy that's been dominating. Brewmaster Ulti's on cooldown. If he goes top and does like an X combo on that guy, he's going to kill him. And instead, oh, oh. three points in the Whirling Death. This is what you do when you go mid. There's no trees in the mid lane anyways, so yep. just go for your other skills. He just stands there and he trades hits with Kunkka. And he doesn't care about anti-mobility. He's so tanky that it, he just stands there. PPD's out way too far with a catcher from Ninja Boogie. They knew that losing Beam would do so much work and Kunkka down, Bane down. Mineski continue to start racking up the kill. Seven to one, 2K gold net worth. And another thing you usually lose by doing this trialing kind of thing is you just don't have as many levels, but they're being successful oh, getting kills. Deep, this and is they're catching deep. up. The Shark Room can just slow him down perfectly, buy a little bit more time for the follow up stun, whirling death, and Shark Room pullback is what gets the kill. And all this was very efficient. Moon had a regeneration rune through that entire fight. Misses very few last hits, heads back mid, and everything is going ideal for, for Mineski now. Uh, still level 5 on Luna. That's maybe the one hero that's a bit under leveled, moderately under leveled. But Morphling's sitting about the same, so Mineski's got to feel happy with their, their current positioning. They're the going to be ecstatic about Moon's position. He's got a full hood of Defiance flying on the Courier. He's coming out with the boots of speed as well, and there's an extra headdress for Ice 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 uh, for the Brewmaster. Now, don't think this is a gank, guys. CC is just farming, because this is about all he can do against the Timbersaw right now with 15 armor and a hood. I don't, I don't even know how they kill Timbersaw, to be honest. Like, most of their damage is actually magic burst, and that's going to be the case for a long time until the, the Morphling gets farmed. So I, I think Moon's just going to dominate this game. That's what it looks like. You start to beg the question, like, hey, you can have you can have great auras to work with, you can have damage negation, but 
Mineski can just out sustain everything as well. Ice, ice, ice on the top. There's the Rune Master split, gets it off. Instant Sun and Desai will send the Morphling up and towards the air, but here comes Jabs looking for some extra follow up. Now remember, he jumped into that Morphling split form. Ice, ice, ice has already killed off Sai. They're coming back towards Pycat and they have the stun. Oh, he'll waveform it up. So Pycat back underneath the tower. Meanwhile, CCNC did die. He was just trying to farm the mid lane. Once again, actually just falling. Just ends up going down, man. Yeah. You, you can't even approach the creep wave. This is like the worst possible case scenario here. The Timber Sod just isn't going to die, and he can harass and easily kill his opponent. Like, his, his only limiter here is mana. That's it. He's got a Soul Ring, so, and soon to be Arcane Boots, I'm sure. Ninja Boogie got rid of that ward, the PPD, out in the bottom lane. So, the vision game now for Optic on bottom lane becomes even scarier. They're losing that Observer Ward that was watching the bottom rune, too. So, Optic, they need more information on the map. I don't even know if information matters. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to die if I go mid. That's that's some information. Okay. Like, CC almost has to just gank constantly. And this I, is I a think really Zai bad is, position. Zai is going to prove this point. Jabs had an invis rune. He doesn't even need level six for Vendetta. They control these bounty, these these action runes too much. Like, if, if you're in your lane and you can't do anything against your opponent, you just have to gank. And that's what CC is doing now, trying to grab the Brewmaster. They need this kill so bad. He has 10 one charges. No TP support's coming. You do have an assassin walking up here, and they do find the kill. So, much needed to give something towards Pycat. 416 gold, but on bottom lane, the Eclipse is off. It's Mushi still on the run, 33, right behind him. You've got extra support. Nijibuki does not have a defensive disruption available just yet. And looks like 33 wants to leave with PPD. I think they're a little worried about Timbersaw potentially rotating or somebody else. They were very close to that shrine. It wouldn't have been difficult. Yeah, when you're that far behind enemy lines and you spent that much time diving, your opponents are going to react. So do the safe move there. Moon's still pressuring the tower the way he knows best, which is just tanking creep waves. Yep. <laughs> Maybe some tower too. But... And they're going to go for a kill. Sentry was there, so they saw Jabs arriving under the Vendetta, which kind of messes up the gank. Shadow Demon was there and ready to go. Yeah, sees him walking in, is able to spot things. Can he get the deny? <laughs> they're looking oh, for it, they got snag. it. They needed more help there. X marks the spot, going off. It's over inside the Dire Jungle. Spike Carapace makes it difficult to get the attack into Jabs straight away so he can arcane turn for the stun, but it won't happen. Pycat's adapted strike is enough to get the kill. Trade off his damage for the tier one tower on top lane. So they're going to lose uh, a lot of tower advantage from the, the laning stage that Mineski has put out here, just because CC has had a tough lane and the, even the off lane hasn't done so hot. So they're going to lose towers. But if they can turn this into ganks, it could all be worth it. They're looking for Spirit up into the trees, chasing down Ice Ice Ice. Remember, he has the Bruce split. He's got no TP for 25 seconds. Friends are coming, though. Moon's on the way around the back lines. And that's the guy they have to be most scared of. Everybody yep. else they can deal with, but not Timbersaw. Timbersaw is invincible at this point, more or less. CCNC already TP'd out. He's down to defend bottom lane, which is being pressured by the SD and Luna. And this is a ticket now for Moon to just start creep skipping. Might as well. Next tower needs to die, right? Jabs is hunting. No sentry wards down in that area. It's inside the mid lane. But Optic Gaming have used that, so Jabs' Vendetta can set up for the gank onto Pycat. He's pretty low right Boogie, now. Boogie, disruption. Do you go for the stun straight away? Yeah, you do. And they have a kill. Yep, so I, th I think Kyle described this as like a frame-perfect stun. It's a stun that's already on the ground, so if you disrupt into stun, he has no ability to use Morph unless he uses like a Yule Scepter, or actually Yule's doesn't work, I believe you need a BKB is the only thing that's fast enough, something like that. So um, by doing that, that setup with disruption into that, instant death. Like, Morphling just can't sit that low in HP. He needs to sit at like 800, 900 and he's, when he's walking around like that. Maneski are keeping the pressure on. Smoke gang towards the bottom lane. Ninja Boogie's going the more direct route. Next Assassin's ramped around the back to put down the Observer Wars, so Disruption. PPD, again, that target. So friends are nearby, Micro Illusion to get it away, and uh, not gonna happen, and Jabugi finally breaks free. But who's his next target? 33 and Zai nearby. They have that Dark Troll Summoner controlled up with the Helm of the Dominator. So Ninja Boogie dropping insanely low. He'll get the Catcher off. And now the Eclipse begins from Mushi. They get rid of Zai, but it's a one for one trade off the next target. It's Ice Ice Ice, but he splits. He was on 70 HP. He'll get it off. The stun to follow through into CC and see. He can't run anywhere. So Moon just finishes him up. And Pycat, what do you want to do? Sent up by the Storm Brewling. He has waveform available. But where do you go? How do you do it? The Done from Jabs, hits perfectly. Strength more far. Pycat has 2k HP. They had the help from 33 to kill off Ice Ice Ice. They knew he was going to be low when he came back to World Living. 33 can't stop the ultimate. He wants to stick around for this fight. PPD is still here to fight as well, but then again, so is Moon. Chains through, cuts down the Underlord, and 
and moves his attention towards Zai. PPD, Nightmare off cooldown, three seconds time. He has the Fiend script, he just doesn't have the life to survive, nor the friends to be where he is, too far away from the tier one tower to really get a great position. They just can't fight right now. Like, I can't believe they canceled the Underworld ultimate. They need, they needed to get out of there, but they, they must feel like they're scrambling here. They know they're getting run over. They need to get some kills, and they've got Fiend's grip. But look at this. Moon's going to go all the way to the fountain. <laughs> he doesn't have to. He doesn't have the mana as well. That's his only problem. we got to remember, we're 14 minutes into this game. The Timbersaw doesn't have a never-ending mana pool, but he's got so many reactive armor stacks up that finding the damage to get through it is almost impossible. A quick banishment fight by Ninja Boogie. They'll keep PPD out of the fight. They do not want his Fiend's Grip grabbing Mushi. Any kills that Optic can get at this point are, are going to get them back into the game a little bit, but they're doing everything they can to get farm in the meantime. CC and C's across the top lane. He's got four drum charges left. Pycats have got an invis rune, but he's just going to be focusing on pushing lanes. And it just feels like Maneski's able to set so much more tempo. They can show up or react to ganks in so many good ways as long as they have the right people in front. That means Brewmaster or Timbersaw force Optic to go on those heroes, and then they can back them up with Shadow Demon and their other heroes. Moon's wanting to be hit down there on the bottom lane. If this attack begins, he wants to have the reactive armor charges up and running in 33. He's trying to give it a shot. And they got friends, CC and C is going to arrive, so they just need a good X mark. Or oh, they just started off with PPD. Nightmare, Fiend's Grip available, do they commit it? Yeah, they do. They're going to try and find that damage to kill the Timbersaw, but Ninja Boogie, the TP arrives, Disruption is out. They find Great the Centaur stun. Stomp, they have again the X mark spot, so Moon can't chase him down, but he's just regenerating so quickly. ET Splitter, how much are they going to throw at Moon as he continues to tank, but he cannot tank forever. The SD could not hold him back as four players from Optic assaulting the Timbersaur on bottom lane, finally bring him down, and they'll get the T1 tower. That, that was just incredible. I think nobody in this game thought that guy was going to die, including Mineski. Like, it's, they could have backed him up at any point. That was only like a 30 second duration gank. But in the meantime, they're just constantly farming top. They're getting farm in the other lanes. Uh, the, the Shadow Demon got his net worth there, which is counteracting Fiend's Grip. But Optic's got to be happy. They finally got the kill on the board. Uh, the gold goes to 3-3 on the Underlord. I'm sure they would have preferred that on like CC or somebody else, but that's the guy dealing the damage. Yep. At this point, too, he may even be the uh, the survivability. Like, do you get the Crimson Guard? Do you just try and tank up your entire team at this point? Or... That's, that's a pretty good idea. Crimson against somebody like Luna who's going to have Bouncing Glaives or Shadow Demon Illusions of a Luna. That's going to be pretty useful. But against somebody like Timbersaw, Crimson's not going to help anybody other than the Underlord with his HP. So, so what does he do with the cash? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Something like a mech could be very good because then he's able to heal his team. He goes for the weirdest he item I've seen. He goes for a veil of disgust. A second hat. Uh, but it makes sense this game because it's going to lower the magic resistance of the Timbersaw and allow them to kill him easier. With that said, it doesn't work very well when your opponent already has a hood. But they need damage and they know that. And this is like the only way they can do the, get any damage until Kunkka gets either a crit or the uh, Morphling gets an E-Blade, and those are not in their in their fortunes anytime soon. Maneski are hunting top lane. They have a fresh Blink Dagger on Ice Ice Ice, three-man smoke up. Mushi was already pressuring the top lane, and Pycat fishes. Like, he smells something is wrong. So he's uh, backed up into the tree line. Dyer will scan up. No one's running at him. Optic, in fact, they are running at him. They're all smoked up, and they're going to angle around. Smoke will break. Ninja Boogie in 33. So position's being revealed. Zai, he's a little bit further back with the ET. Puts the spirit out into the stomp. This will catch out. Jabs, 33, still in the trees. Starts the ultimate. He wants to get out of here. CC and C is nearby. The Brewmaster sends him up and towards the air. As he hits the ground, it will not matter as the Underlord ultimate does take him back, no matter if the Brew has him in the Tornado. Peter does get spotted by the Creepway, so he's going to have to TP out here too, but this is not too bad for Optic considering their, their positioning. They were a little out of position uh, when they ended up breaking the smokes. <laughs> Peter's actually just going to wait. Oh, they still had a ward though, so... <laughs> okay. EPD. They take the Nightmare off, a Shadow Demon does it, so Ice 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 is free to fight. Jabs as well. So, goodbye to PPD. Might be one of those moments where you're like, surely they won't be here anymore. They would have gone back by now. No. Luna revealed herself on bottom. You probably thought, yeah, the entire team just quickly moved out. But he didn't give them that much gold anyways. He gave them 180 gold. Uh, he loses 89. So uh, a little bit of information. They know they're top, and now they can uh, make strategy decisions based on that info. Optic hunting around the mid lane. Disruption comes out. Jabs. He comes in for the stun. It does not connect to Zai, but it won't matter when Zai takes that much damage. Oh, he's Maybe it won't. 79 HP. He'll walk back to the dire side of the river. The pit actually made it very difficult for Maneski to continue the chase. But then again, it's a timber saw. Level 4 timber chain. He can just keep this chase going. Looking for the right line and CC and C perfect timing for the X mark pullback. 
They might try to go for Moon here. They've got Fiend's Grip, but you know, just high ground gets out of there. Would have been really hard either way, especially with CC so low. Nobody wants to commit for that kill right now. And they're just going to reset here. More I... farm time is going to be okay for, uh, for Optic here. They're kind of going even. That gold advantage that Manessi played with in the early game is staying pretty constant, which means it's not really increasing or becoming better as everybody's net worth is increased. Ice 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 is playing beyond Mr. Patient on this top lane. He's got his split up in 10 seconds time. Doesn't have the mana, however, to, to blink. Actually, he does with the Soul Ring. So he can clap, initiate, but he's got no other friends nearby. Brewmaster is actually a little rough sometimes ag against heroes like Morphling, though, because if you get into super late game situations, he's just going to be killed by uh, by physical right clicks. I mean, it's it's a very late story, I suppose, but I, for now, Ice 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 is doing really good. It's a good day, especially when he's able to finish up the Vlads nice and early. Maneski's aura power is going to go through the roof. That's a good point. More damage reduction, basically. Make it even harder for them to get kills. If they just get like a pipe or something on Maneski's side, then everything just feels bad on, on Team Optic, damage-wise. But if they can spread their opponents apart, pick them off one by one, they also got Elder Titan to amplify this. They're Here going comes in. Split up. Fiend's Grip, make sure Ice 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 goes nowhere. Chabs was nearby, but looks like he didn't really feel like he had an opening for it. So he starts off with a stun into the Vendetta. They find the bonus damage and then whirling death chaining through. Zai will get his TP off. Huge kill. Um, Pycat not watching his hero, not uh, pressing uh, Morph just fast enough, and he ends up getting chain stunned and bursted. So could have possibly survived there, but hard to react in time, that's for sure. He goes down, Optic's gonna try to make a play in the mid lane at least, push the other lanes, force their opponents to move around. They've also got a, a Shadow Blade now on Kunkka, so even more damage, that's one of the benefits. They can do some pseudo pure damage when Kunkka starts slapping people. They don't get their option in the mid lane. SD was waiting. It's just not safe. They, they can't hard commit to anything. They have to defend oh, the top. Here comes CC and C with the ship. He's looking for the kill over on Mushi. Mushi, he doesn't have the wand inside of his inventory, so he doesn't have the regeneration available from the quick charges. Had the TP scroll instead. It's up to Moon to try and tank through it. PPD, Nightmare onto the Nyx Assassin. Try and control him up. Spy Carapace makes it difficult. Has done available. Can't get it off in time. As now Ninja Boogie joins the fight with the SD disruptions out. Looking for that control onto Pycat. Oh, he gets ready. copies of the Nyx Assassin because that's what Pycat was at the time. But more friends, Ice Ice Ice, blink into jump split. Still not coming out. Well, Upix found a way to, to win team fights. They just completely ignore the tipper saw. Uh, put him to sleep and attack everybody else because those heroes are killable. And Mushi making a moderate mistake there by being focusable there. Um, they rotate over, they get an X combo on him. Like, until Luna gets BKB, he cannot defend himself. And he is by far the highest net worth, easiest to kill hero on Maneski's side. And that's the one weakness in their draft is that if they can just kill Luna a bunch of times before she finishes the BKB, they could get some tempo advantage. Yeah. So then it's just Maneski slow down the pace a little bit more. I say that as Ice 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 able to run up. Looks like uh, CC and C unable to get that control combination onto Ice Ice Ice, and Split is forced. Ice 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 will only really want to get away from this. He has no other friends nearby, so it's a run out with this Earth Pander of his. Yep. At this stage, he's not going to be able to get any kills on supports anymore. They've leveled too much, they have too much health. Zai busy pushing out the mid lane. It does at least keep Optic busy. If they're spending half their time uh, time up in the air while the rest of Maneski are assaulting the bottom part of the lane. But considering that they haven't even hit the tower yet, I don't think this is all too bad for them. Shadow Demon in a great position to save the Luna if she gets in trouble, but tower should fall. No, this is going to buy a second here. Yeah, but with Maneski could. having a vision on that hillside, but the orbs and sentry see way too much. Zai comes out, the stun, Pycat lucky to dodge that one. Zai, of course, was never going to dodge a PPD, using Nightmare to cause problems once more. But the tower has already fallen, and the pressure will continue. The ward party on the cliff is going to end here. And it looks like at this point, Maneski uh, break off across the map, push out the other lanes again, and look for another gank opportunity. Taking the tier two, or the tier one tower was fine. Now they're going to pressure the tier two with the illusions as well. Um, wait for the next assassin ulti, go for a kill somewhere else. The heroes they want to kill are definitely Pycat on the Morphling. He doesn't quite have his Lincoln, so he's pretty far behind in terms of net worth. In fact, he's about sitting equal with a Brewmaster. That is not the place you want to be when you're playing a hero like Morphling, but his lane was super hard, and he got killed a couple times with some some good ganks, so tough game for him. Are you a big fan of uh, seeing the BKB coming onto CC and C as opposed to finding that uh, that glass cannon surprise hit 
that you can get out from, from a hero like a Kanka? I mean, he's already got some Glass Cannon with the Shadow Blade. It's adding 175 damage. In some ways, it's like a 100% crit. It's like a double damage hit. Um, I think it's fine. He needs BKB because he has to deal with things like being Cyclone in the air for six seconds or infinitely, for, for dying just to Eclipse instantly, to dying to Timber Saw stuff. He needs Magic Community this game. He has to go for this. He can transition afterwards into something else. And he doesn't necessarily have to pop BKB every time that, that things are hitting the fan. He can just go in Viz, look for the right moment, and then use BKB when the fights really matter and try to get a big win for his team. Optica look around, looking around Roshan. They did finish up a new item, Pycat, now with the Lincoln Sphere. I'll make everything easier. Extra protection, but Zai, however... Oh, at least he has a protection of movement. Mushi! Well, he throws out the ulti. It'll end up working a little bit for him because PPD was close enough to cop at least two out of those beams. But Zai on the run. Moon slowed him down with the Shark Room. On cooldown for the moment. And the pit. Zai! So low, Moon! He'll actually <laughs> dodge the Shark Room running uphill. But Moon, he really wants this. But he'll dodge that as well. Timber Chain up. Knew where the trees were. Centaur. Quick hop stomp. Won't be able to connect. Moon again. Zai is just no foot way. fancy footworking around this. Hits the stun. They'll hit the boat. And they're going to bring down the Timber Saw oh underneath God, the Tier 4 towers. Zai, that much bulk? You'd think you wouldn't be Michael Flatley. Dude, Zai was in his brain and his opponents at the same time. Every single time that Moon goes for a spell, he instantly jukes. He, he was planning ahead. He was completely reading him. And Moon was like, all I got to do is land one spell. This is totally worth the dive. It's going to come. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, missed that one. That's OK. I'll get the next one. Oh, the next one, maybe? And I all of a sudden, he's just dead. Torrent onto Isaiah's side. Quick follow up in the Fiend's grip. They need more damage than what they've currently got with this ET spirit trying to help him out. But here comes Moon into the fight, looking for revenge. The ET split up. Ice 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 so low. The pit it's holds done. him there, but the three man stun from Jabs. So sweet. Disruption. Finally, Ice 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 will fall as Jab starts his run. No Spy Carapace to save him. Maneski will lose too. And Pycat, indeed, well played. Pat in the back for all the Optic players. And Optic is finally into damage territory. Between uh, the, the Elder Titan Aura being maxed out and everybody's base magic resistance being removed, and uh, the, the Veil and all the magic damage that they have, they can finally start killing heroes. Oops. At least the uh, Ghost Scepter was delivered, but Mushi kills the Courier on top lane. That's a pretty... I, I guess Courier Gold at this point is not that big of a deal, but... At least he got the items. The Ghost Scepter is pretty important sometimes if you're dealing with like a lot of illusions or something like that. But It kind of means a bit for uh, CCNC. He wants the BKB to be transferred out to him. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a big problem. Hopefully he doesn't die in the next couple minutes or so if he yeah. gets caught out of position. He's got two and a half before he'll be like, ah, oh, damn it, maybe I should have just gone back to base. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad feeling. I could walk across the entire the entire map. But for pro players, it's like the most painful thing that you can experience. But the average player, you're like, it's no, it doesn't matter, right? Smoke. Up from uh, Vanessa, they're going to go inside Roshan. Moon's nearby, they're just trying to establish control. They are not the fastest Roshers. That's, that's one big negative to their lineup. No medallions here. Well, they see C, C, and C, but they don't understand that 33 is right behind him with that fully completed up Crimson Guard. They Ready to try them. and find so Roshan. Drop down to 4.6k. Yeah, you are right. The sentry is there, so they got a little bit of extra information on him. All right, he X's back with the TP. Now he's got the BKB. He can fight. They're not fully there, though. Pycat is still. On bottom lane, he's just taken the tier two tower. TP scrolls on cooldown. So Optic, they've dissuaded Mineski from continuing Roshan and is buying more time for PyCat to add pressure. It's perfect. PyCat has to be careful though. He knows that if they back out of Roche, they're gonna be looking to counter the split push. So for now, he's gonna play a little game of chicken. He can stay down here, maybe continue pushing if needed, but as long as Optic can control the Roche pit, and delay Roche from being taken. They can keep on this trajectory where they're, they're winning team fights. That's one of the greatest things about ET, right? Like you can always just put a spirit inside the pit. The stomp is such a big AOE that Mineski can't sit inside the pit at all you can and just... attempt it. In fact, they're actually doing it themselves. Optica are in the pit. Pycat as well as 33. Huge. They are actually trying to bring down Roshan. Now, Ice 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 is nearby. Does he smell a rat? They already scouted out with the SD Illusions, and it may be way too late. Ice 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 jumps in. He'll go for the split, but Roshan, Aegis Immortal, is already picked up by Pycat. They look for a new target. 33 is just taken out of the fight. But PPD will die down the river as Zai Running away, jabs, wonderful blink into the double stun. Allows Moon just to follow up the pit, creates some space from 33. And with the Crimson Guard, they have so much sustain, but Ice 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 back into the fight. The stomp from Zai creates space, but Moon, defensive Yule Scepter up and towards the area, does not have a lot of charges up in reactive armor. And PPD, he got the grip from the lower ground. Moon will tank through a little bit of it, but he cannot tank through all of it. Ice 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 is in too deep. Nushi's already burned the Eclipse, and now what do you really do? The fight. They're leaving him. They'll let Ice 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 die to Pycat. 
And the rest of Maneski are in the mid lane. And I don't think Pike has done just yet. Yeah, man, Maneski's uh, approach there to chase was really solid, but Optic is just reacting really well. They Slides won't find the kills space. they want, though. I mean, they're using their abilities pretty well, but that that fight was just kind of forced. I mean, they used the moment of Optic finishing the Roche to think like, okay, this is when we run in. Let's get some kills. They're going to be a little bit low, but the, like the the Timber Saws looks good. He's dealing damage, but he's not dealing that much damage. He doesn't have an Ags yet. He's just high in regen. He's got utility items, mm -hmm. but finally, like they just have so much damage now between all their magic nukes that even without E Blade, things are feeling tough. And E Blade is here, 50 gold away, and Pycats. Ready to fight, and he was super underfarmed early. But the the last couple engagements, he's just throwing out adaptive strikes and right clicking a little bit, and everyone's blown up on Maneski's side. Why does it also feel too like whenever Moon's in the fight, yeah, he's got under ten reactive armor charges? That's because there's no creeps in the jungle. Yeah, and no one's hitting them. BPD. Well, okay, he'll explode, and they actually got the spike carapace over towards Zai. The boat a defensive destruction from Ninja Boogie, saving his teammate from any kind of more harm. Zai on the rump, there's the send up, 33, ready to take them all back home. The damage is enough to kill off Zai. Everyone else, however, is back safely. Left one man behind. They did. Zai's been playing really good, though. His KDA looks real ugly, but man, he has been like the, the integral hero in almost every single team fight. Setting up disables, setting up ultimates, amplifying his team's damage. At man. this point, we almost have a contender for the Melk Award. Yeah. I, who knows? We'll see by the end of this. 0, 9, 11, ET. Unless you get the biggest buffs ever and you're walking around with plus 300 damage, you're probably not going to find the kill compared to, a, like, the Daedalus build coming in here from CC and C. Yeah. So for me, it looks like Optic is doing better in team fights. So that said, Maneski still has a gold advantage. And the most important thing is their next win condition is coming up, which is Luna getting a lot of items. She's basically right on that verge. One more item and she's she's in super farm territory. So it'll become kind of a battle where Luna can deal a ton of damage to enemy heroes which finally puts Maneski in a, a more comfortable fighting position. Um, but in the same vein, they're going to have more fling blowing up backline heroes, and uh, all, it all depending on how well the team fight setups from Optic come out in terms of, like, Elder Titan stomps, um, X marks the spot combos, Fiend's grips, things like that. If they can control and kill the Luna, Maneski has no damage. Yeah. So it's going to be a, a team fight where Luna's up front taking fights. Shadow Demon tries to disrupt by time for, for Luna to take team fights. And then Timbersaw needs to rotate into even more damage items and, and team fight contribution. Well, Optic are forcing the fight right now. Straight down middle lane towards the tier one tower. Fortification will slow things down. Jabs jumps in, able to get that stun. Already triggering the Linker Spear onto Morphling. But the ship, it's on the way in. Moon will jump in too, and Brewmaster, the split is up. CCNC's got the BKB to protect him. Needs more distance as the ET split up will help with that. Maneski not wanting to go for a full chase as the BKB is wearing off. They look for the control. 33 is the one to do it as Brewmaster. These Brewlings are such a problem. And the follow-up's done from Jabs. They'll find the kill. Zai wants to create that sleeping space. They're able to do so. Burning through the Aegis of the Morphling. But now the double buybacks are up. All five players up for either side. Moon with the creep wave. At least now we can have some reactive armor charges. But still under 10. Optic, they want to get back to safety. Reset the fight. They have the shrines to regenerate on. So with the buyback on Underlord and the uh, the death of the Aegis, they do lose out a little bit in that fight, but it all wasn't terrible. Oh, Where are they going? they're jumping in. They're going towards the Hellbear oh. Smasher right next to the T1 tower, able to hit the pit with the E-Blade Pop Brewmaster. Goodbye, Ice Ice Ice. Next target, Moon. Has to timber chain himself away. Oh, no! He gets, He's stuck in the trees! The Shaka will break him free! PPD tried to capitalize on it by jumping forward, but Jabs is there with a the blink dagger. The Nightmare protects PPD! He gets back up the hill, creating more space for Pycat. Now with a double kill, Fiend's Grip holds up Moon in position. They are literally just deleting this Timber Soul from the field until finally he'll take his captive holder. PPD will drop, but do they have the life to survive? Optic staying together. The Crimson Guard is protection. The BKB's already back off cooldown as well. Moon wants more damage. Where's his target? Pycat's over in the trees. They break the Lincoln Spear, but he wave bombs away as Moon chains himself forward. Four staffs up. Zai barely surviving under 100 HP. He'll send his spirit back in to try and do some kind of work to help out 33. If he's got Stomp, he may just do that. A four man? Yeah, it will be, but it doesn't matter. The Underlord has already fallen. Just crazy brawling fights, and, and not that many people are dying. You're, you're really seeing these two lineups that have huge survivability, but they're covering each other, they're backing each other up, disabling other heroes, and even PPD's amazing last stand there didn't mean that much. All it did was keep the Timbersaw busy for about five seconds there.
but they did force buybacks out. So both Ice 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 as well as the SD nin uh, Ninja Boogie had to buy back. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's pretty significant at least. They did at least force an economic problem into the Brewmaster, who's trying to go for a big item. Like, he was holding into a lot of cash, trying to build up this Radiance to try and give them even more power during team fights. I, I think they really need that this game. It's they, they need some other damage contribution. He's doing a great job disrupting team fights, but they need some damage on top of that that's going to allow him to actually pick off heroes like Elder Titan or Bane without necessarily needing either Timbersaw or Luna to get in there. And Luna's life is now just pretty hard. Um, if you watch the the earlier engagement around the tier one mid, Luna had to just pop BKB instantly as soon as you see Morphling. That's one of the big benefits of Morphling as a as a carry. He could just blow up those uh, those enemy carries with a simple combo, and they're gonna have to use Manta styles and BKBs oh! to bait. Jabs down to 280 from almost 1500 with one swing of that blade from C C and C. He didn't even mean to hit him. He was just X Mark pushing the wave, and they were trying to hunt. <laughs> now they have the Observer and Sentry down, they understand that they're there. Actually, they had that before, so yeah, he did actually mean to hit him. I take it all back. It was it was known. That's going to be one of those moments that feels feels great leading into the next team fights. If they can get a good splash off, even on heroes like Luna, it's just going to deal a huge amount of damage, and if Optic Gaming can profit from that, it should be an easy team fight win. And CCNC is upping the damage too. He's going to go for, it looks like, the MKB. Yeah, as it, the next item after. It's a moderately good damage item, not so great for the crit, but against heroes like Brewmaster, who are just going to be throwing Drunken Haze on him, he's not going to be missing very much anymore. And Optic really want this tier 1 tower gone. Keep in mind, they've <laughs> only taken two towers yeah. out of the five towers that Maneski have managed to claim so far. And all those towers that Optic took were bottom lane. It was Pycat's split push previously. Jump in, the attack is out, 33. Damn, he's tanky. Gets the Crimson Guard off now, into the pit. Does he burn the ultimate? No, he won't. There's way too much damage. He knows he cannot survive. The Lucent Beam from Mushi, the final thing to bring down the Underlord. But with the Brewmaster split, they want to go for more, and they're able to do so. Blink into the Whirling Death. You can say goodbye to Zai. He's picked up the Whirling Death attribute perk as well, so we're, re we're reducing 21% of the primary. They're smoke fighting on bottom. They're trying to get an E-Blade one-shot here. He's going to find well, SD. No. Oh, okay. disruption. Defensive in time. Nightmares onto the Luna. Oh, no, he's Pycat can finish the job, but here comes everybody else. Pycat, he BKBs. Waveform on cooldown. One more second, then he can jump away. He's looking for the reactive armor survivability that comes from being Timbersaw. Won't happen. Waveform's up and TP's out. Jabs, oh. no! Very this close. is the stun. I, I don't blame Jabs. He, he's like, why would he Why would he waveform past the trees? He would go <laughs> in the trees. This makes sense. He wasn't there, unfortunately. But oh. good uh, good snipe there. It does cost him a smoke, which is going to hurt a little uh, potentially for the next Roche. And Roche is coming up semi soon. But they're just hoping for an easy kill. Maybe they get lucky. They're able to grab a, an E-Blade adaptive strike kill on Luna. That could absolutely open up the game for the next minute. Yeah. Relieve that pressure, which is also that it's still crazy to think with all this going on that the gold advantage is still actually it's not that heavily like 4k gold advantage for Maneski is not that yeah. much when you think about how many towers are still on the field. It, it feels like that chart is broken. I've, every time I look at it, 4k from Maneski, 4k from Maneski, all game hasn't moved. Was there is there a sign coming from above that 4k is now the new the new the new Maneski advantage? Yeah, yeah, right, well, it, like it's that. meant to be like season change sometime soon, so isn't everybody 4k? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that, Toby. Yeah, that's bring everyone down to your level. Yeah, is that how you? That's how you win. I, I, I love how you think I'm actually at that level. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah. Thanks, man. There's been so much fighting in this game, and and because like every fight is just so constant and nobody's dying, nobody gets to go around and hit creeps. The only people have been like Luna, Timbersaw, and CZ and C basically. Even even the Morphling sitting at a, a mere 200 last hit so far. Yeah. Wait for the SD to actually catch up over them by sending the illusions out to find more. It's like, it's... It's true. It's 75. Wait, did someone actually break their monitor I heard in my ear? Okay. There's a, there's a, there's a replacement monitor on the way. Okay. Maybe uh, I, I, I Underlord will... is very frustrated about not being invulnerable like the hero <laughs> almost always is. Hey, well, he doesn't have his griefs, right? Like, you're, you're lacking the critical There's, critical there's no solution to, to making Timbersaw hurt less. Like, it's... <laughs> He, he reduces your strength, which is a lot of the health, uh, mm -hmm. and, and then you just take all this pure damage. Nothing stops pure damage other than having more health, but to do so, you're buying more strength, which he can also reduce. It's, it's just a bad, it's a problem. You, you basically have to BKB so, or something, so, and he doesn't want to do that. All right. So reduction on reduction. He just has to, be, I mean, he's doing a good job. Something like a Force Staff can really help buy you a couple seconds. He, he does his combo, throws his ultimate down, Force Away, that gives you like six seconds until he can ulti again. That's that's your solution, pretty much. Um, can, can someone get Bushy a blanket? I think he's cold, judging by the fact he's got his jacket on his forearms. 
I've been there before. He needs a one, you know, a little snuggie. He needs one of those snuggie things, right? Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Maybe a branded snuggie. A, br a Mineski branded yeah, exactly. snuggie. Because I mean, you don't want to you don't want to like screw your, your sponsors over because you get a little cold during the match. But I, yeah. they also want you to win. So problem solved. Branded snuggies, man. And you can have the jerseys on the front of it, so it looks like one of the players is hugging you while you play. Yeah, exactly. There you go. See, moral support while staying warm. Everything a player needs. We're back in. Looks like the mods has been quickly replaced as we can try and continue the run of low low delays for any kind of tech problems. Pretty so, so far, very good today. Oh, yeah. Jinx. I, someone someone throws salt over their shoulder. Uh, Luna's finishing up her butterfly here, so gonna have lots of evasion, which I don't think is too big of a deal. A Morphling's gonna have trouble right-clicking her down, but with Konka having Daedalus and almost an MKB here, I think it'll be just fine. Unless he spent all of his money on a buyback recently. No, he just does, has no money. I'm loving what you move preparing his reactive armor charges as much as he can. Didn't go for the tipper chain, plus 8% for the attribute. Yeah. Definitely worth it this game against oh, these strength that blink so quick. The Nightmare ended up going under Ice 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 as PPD wants to escape, but Moon quick on the TP over. Chain, oh, actually being interrupted, PPD buys a little bit more time. That's why you get the plus 100 damage, guys. Easy kill. Well, looking towards Roshan, they'll have to wait a little bit longer. It's a minute and a half before Roshan will respawn. So instead, Maneski looked towards the mid lane. Peter's trying real hard to get these initiations. Uh, a lot of the times he's he's always up in the front. Um, he doesn't have a Glimmer Cape, he doesn't have a Force Staff. I, I find it a bit interesting. Uh, maybe he's expecting his opponents to be a little more spread out, but when you die in moments like this, it just allows your opponents to instantly cross the map, it can put wards down anywhere they want, and to actually do what they want. And right off the bat, Pocket did the right thing, cross the, uh, the other side of the map, instantly starts split pushing, which does prevent Mineski to come back, but I mean, if Roche is up in that moment, boom, Roche dies or you're forced to buy back. So it's kind of hard for them to take engagements. It's actually great how they have the two of them together on the bottom lane. You're talking about uh, how Luna just triggered BKB instantly the second Morphling came anywhere near her. Uh -huh. uh, if you can bait that out, out of Mushi, here comes Pycat. Waveforms forward, does a BKB, takes the damage. Jabs is nearby. 33 actually TP'd out and left Pycat by himself. So Pycat... Uh, don't think this is exactly what he was intending to have happen. BKB starts to strength morph, waveform TP. They cannot stun him, they cannot pull him out of this. Crit all you want. Pycat will survive and has everybody from Badescu rotate to bottom lane. Yeah, it's a very hard kill to get. Uh, if they had one more way to break Lincoln's... In fact, I think Timber saw... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Brewmaster. Brewmaster just got there, so... Yeah, they had no way to deal a little bit more damage. If they have a Dagon, if they have an Aghanim Scepter on Timber saw, they can get that kill, but... It feels like they're just trying to bait out the BKB charge. More than anything on the else. Morphling? Uh, yeah, uh, no, on the uh, on the Luna. Yeah, yeah, optics, for sure. Optics plan then it just didn't didn't come. Yeah, or ideally, if he comes up to the creep wave, maybe they can do some kind of a combo where he dies. Like if they if they can e blade before wave forming, then they can maybe kill him. But yeah. they're coming top. They're looking for the gank. X spark. I, I'm looking at the quick buy of Kunkka. It's a divine rapier in the quick buy for him. He actually moved like off the uh, MKB. Yeah, you don't need to hit hit evasion when you just cut everybody in this small, large AOE, let's be at, real. At the same time, if he ends up dying, this is very, very problematic. It's a it's a pretty good Divine Rapier Shadow Demon game. You gotta watch out for that, you know? Mm. <laughs> I was thinking Luna, but sure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good on Luna, too. That's true. Oh, jabs on the hunt. There is a sentry ward down. PPD doesn't have vision on the other side of the tree line, so into the stun. The ET spirit is out. As Jabs wants to keep running away, the spirit so close to Roshan. If he can start the stomp right now, he'll cause a real problem. Roshan's so low to the sleep. It connects onto Mushi. Moon goes back in again, wants to finish the job, and will be able to. Optic so far away, they do not contest it. Cheese for Moon, egg is for Mushi. And Optic's just going to have to live with these three bounty runes, which I think that it's actually a pretty good trade here. CCNC will be happy with that. 169 plus for every single bounty. He's already critting at uh, 1066. Now they are going to have to kill Luna twice, which is really hard. And there's also a cheese on the map that they're going to have to deal with, but... Uh, Bottom lane. Bane scouting out the guy that We're he going absolutely again. can't Pycat, kill. Stumble Connect, Moon comes in, has that fresh scythe. And Pycat unable oh. to reply in time. And that's the difference maker. Now they have a Hex, which is another three and a half seconds to disable. The Mana Burn breaks the Lincolns and, and they get a kill. So Pycat's in a little bit too low there on t in terms of health. CCNC attempted his uh, his wonderful cleave under Ice Ice Ice, removed about 600 points of life. I mean, you can't kill him either way. Like, no. the, all, all these cores are so high HP that it, it's not that threatening, really. Mm -hmm. So Mineski still gets to sit on the enemy side of the map, especially with Pycat's death. They can definitely force a buyback here. They're looking for the push up through mid. The Glaives begin, the Torrent sending Mushi up. 
Enfeeble as well, remove that damage. Mushi not too healthy. Four staffed away with 860 HP, but this doesn't stop Moon from jumping in deeper. 20 reactive armor charges up and ready to go. CCNC pulls him in, able to connect onto the torrent. They don't get that big cleave damage into him just yet. Brumar's split does come out from Maneski, trying to keep this control level up nice and high so they can finish this Raxing. They're even attacking the top, so they're taking tier three tower in both mid Jeez. and top lane. The damage on the PPD is extraordinary, but he's still alive and kicking. The Glaives doing so much work. The Brulings, they're gonna end in one second time, so the control will finally dissipate. But the double buybacks are here. Both Morphling, Pycat and PPD back to World of Living. They want this kill on the next Assassin. They're pulling back in again. They can Connect and the waveform forward. They didn't even need to see him, but they threw the sentry down anyway. Definitely a moment of panic here for for o or for Optic here. I mean, they're getting picked off repeatedly. It's not a lot, but it's just like a guy here and a guy there, and it gives Mineski the space to cross the map and do this pressure. And now they've lost a midrax. Top is exposed as well. They're going to lose shrines afterwards. It was amazing they how, stop how quickly heroes. they could uh, also just split pressure. Like both top lane as well as mid lane being attacked at the yeah. same time. And Optic looked like they just they didn't have the numbers or the focus on how to defend it. Just disrupt Luna when you're that close to the enemy base. And if you're not worried about them showing up, just disrupt Luna, send the Illusions top, cut the creep wave, tower's dead. Rapier has arrived. 42 minutes in for CC and C. Is what they need. He, he did at least two crits that I saw, or at least cleave hits yeah. mid that I saw. No crits on him. Maybe if he gets some crits, they can get a kill. They got the Luna relatively low, but that was only threatening Aegis, so Minescu's playing this really safe and smart. The 4k advantage has now changed. It's now 13. That's pretty good. But with this Rapier, I mean, if he gets a crit, that could be some people getting one shot. Shadow Demon comes to mind instantly. Nyx Assassin, although with Spike Terrapis, pretty dangerous. Oh, no. Could just drop his health to half or something like that. But I, I've, I've heard uh, stories of Casting Ghost Ship, then going to do the crit. That way you only take half the damage. You can't, basically, you're not going to die no matter what. Next nope. top on Morphling, he could die solo. Oh, Pycat can't allow this to happen. BKB's up. That would have the life to survive. Got down to like 180 HP, but out of spells on Timber Sauce and no kill. Man, it, like I really thought Morphling would be the hero looking for these kinds of kills, but it's just been him being pressured repeatedly. Even with the Lincolns, he's just vulnerable. Yep. So how does Mineski then approach this? Like, you, obviously you have to understand the amount of damage that can come in from CC and C. And they just pinged it as well. They just pinged the Rapier. It was a 1600 crit. That was without what CCNC got. <laughs> that was just like his regular auto attack crit. Yep. Um, sentries help a lot. Uh, that way they can see him coming. Uh, a gem, uh, high ground vision. As he's approaching, you initiate on him instead. Ideally, Cyclone him, for example. That way his X gets canceled and they can go on him. Speaking of that, Gem Jabs just got it, so he oh, ticks your box plate. already. Moon on bottom lane, the Fiend's Grip is out, the pit, they just destroy the timber. Support is coming in. I mean, they're, they're it's all coming in from Maneski. You can buy back onto Moon, so Nightmare onto the ST, trying to keep him out this fight. Mushi letting that Eclipse go, but 33 tanked up a lot, but PP got around the corner. He needs a brain tap, can't do it. Jabs dropping down low. Optic, they've got the damage, and Pycat's got the kills. Double for him. No buybacks coming in from Maneski. They don't want to find it just yet. The Brumar split's going to wear off. CC and C looking for the torrent to connect. It will not do so, but Mushi so low on life. CC and C hit him once. Doesn't happen. They get it instead from the rest of Optic. Aegis cracks. Moonball back. So does the Nyx Assassin. The numbers now in favor of Maneski. They have to get this Divine Rapier out. Let's CC and C. He doesn't really hit the mark. In fact, he got hexed up. He hasn't been able to swing. They're pulling back down again. The dust comes down. CC and C. This Rapier will be lost. He's got no mana. He's got nothing. They give the Rapier oh. to the Luna. The damage will just skyrocket. And oh. Optic, I think that's the game. They got no buybacks. He's being paid for his Rapier, man. Very inexpensive Rapier, but they, and they tried to stick around and, and win the fight, but they held those buybacks for so long, they didn't they didn't buy back until finally the Luna goes down with the Aegis. Then when uh, Optic was overcommitted, that's when they buy back, get back on the back line and try to catch CC and C. My god, 5-2-2 two, two plus damage on Mushi, already had 2-1-1. One, one. They just go straight through the bottom lane. Pycat's doing everything he can by pushing out the mid lane, but it doesn't matter. They just go for the GG push here, Maneski. They understand that Optic have nothing left to fight with. They cannot fight back. They cannot defend. GG game one goes the way of Maneski. Just an amazing game by them. Their, their laning stage was just so dominant. The hero picks that they had they made sure that 
they just made Optic hard to, to get in the game. The, the Morphling was always behind. CCNC was delayed and had to had to turn into this, like, I'm going to gank hero. Um, and from there, their late game teamfights just never really felt good because of things like Timbersaw's damage. He just made a lot of their cores feel not tanky, not able to play the roles they wanted to. Yeah, it did seem, though, for some points, like, there was, like, like good positioning from Optic. There was a chance. The fight around mid lane kind of felt like, hey, Optic are actually pulling this together. The Lunar isn't all, all, all powerful. Moon was having trouble standing on the front lines, they found ways to deal with it, but then everything just seemed to start to fall apart. And the Nesky, with the with the with the acquisition of that rapier, you knew the game was done. They couldn't allow yes. that fight to go that badly. The best two buybacks that Maneski probably ever spent. Yeah, if they don't let if they don't let Maneski get uh, the Roshan, then maybe that fight goes easier. Um, yeah. If they can take a better fight on the map without their who's getting picked off, everything would have gone a lot better for them. Yeah, so many things to break down, but that's why we have a panel and not the casters. Red Eye, do it for us, man. Uh, well, I've got some men on the panel that will do it for us. That's for sure. Thank you very much, Toby. Uh, yes, yeah, same victory for Maneski in game number one. A victory for Newbie in game one on stream B, if you've been following that one as well. That's just about to start in game number two against LFY. So make sure you've got that one on the second screen as well. We've got Nahaz and Capitalist to break down that first game. Uh, impressive game from Moon and the boys in Maneski. Uh, kind of what you expected? Mm. Uh, it was a scary game for Mineski, despite uh, despite having almost everything go their way early. I think you can make a case they won all three lanes. Mm. The Moon Timber saw, I mean, 45k damage twice. Any other hero in the game dominated that game from start to finish, but it still felt like they needed a big Roshan fight and Dude, a Hex reveal kill yep. on PyCat bottom lane to really take control. Yeah, and that's credit to Optic, isn't it? It certainly is credit to Optic. I think Optic played really well. Um, I don't want to throw any shortcomings on their play. I think they absolutely played the best they could with their lineup. Um, yeah. I think it's always a little bit difficult to be able to play a lineup that doesn't have the clear initiation factor that has to play a lot more reactive. And uh, Optic really surprised me. I think both the supports from Optic played fantastic. Uh, both Peter and Zai did really well. Peter had some great positioning. Um, Zai had that one amazing juke as well. But for me, I'm concerned about Maneski because I feel like this should have been a cleaner win. I feel like this should have been a 30-minute victory for them. And it, as you said, Alan, it got scary. Yeah. It, it should not have been quite as sloppy as it was. It shouldn't have extended to a 45-minute game where we have a divine rapier on this Kunkka and a chance to be able to win the game for Optic. Yeah, and I, I think I want to double down on what Cap said about the two supports for Optic. Zai is level three at nine minutes. Uh, their supports, I, I think they, I think one of them had, had hit six by the 15 minute mark, but it was awfully close. These supports were under leveled and these are not two supports, especially the Elder Titan that are playable with a level deficit at that point in the game. Uh, and they still found a way to have an impact in these fights. Mm, yeah, they did. Uh, Zai ended up, uh, 0, 11, 16, which doesn't sound that impressive, but when we figure out they had 22 kills, he's in 16 out of 22. That's, that's pretty yeah. decent. My, my boy Zug, uh, Zai here representing uh, Young Thug. You know, I didn't kill anybody, but I had something to do with that body. You know, he oh, had zero kills. <laughs> he had zero kills, but I think his, his well impact done. in the game was, uh, uh, was absolutely massive, um, even though they did end up losing. I, I really feel like Optic almost looked like the the better team in some regards. Yeah. And I think if they have the draft advantage, we both felt yeah. like that Mineski um, had the, the draft win here. Honestly, Mushi really. I mean, just no, one, that one, was, one those, Mushi, those that was a some, rough game for Mushi, yeah, man. Yeah. Those are some suspect eclipses, and, and among <laughs> other things. <laughs> yeah, nine, nine, two, and 13 for him. Um, do you feel like it was just one, one slight difference in their draft optic that could have, you know, some sort of initiation, for instance, would have given them a, an opportunity to go to head to head but more often than I, not? I don't, if this, if this makes any sense to you, Paul, I don't feel like they had that 33 trump card in this right. draft. Oh, there yeah. wasn't there wasn't like a setup for the 33. Is he going to be on this year or is he going to be? You knew that last pick pretty much was going to be the off laner. It just, it didn't feel like you had that same fear factor for right. him that you've seen in these optic drafts there, recently. There's not an active impact of game winning moments from an Underlord, excluding yeah. some sort of Dark Rift YOLO play, right? Like. That's not what Underlord is for you. His Taxi impact service in the game optic. is a lot more ephemeral. You know, he just has <laughs> right. this constant impact on the game, but it's not that hard hitting that yeah. you usually want to be able to yeah. see. Yeah, I, I like get what 33. you mean because we're sat there just going, "Oh, what's it gonna be?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no. All right, that's exactly but it was, right. It was a gr it, it was a good Underlord game. Sure. It was just like the, it felt like Optic 
you saw a couple things that we talked about in the draft. First yes. of all, the Morphling did not have a good target. Like, he would go to the back line and try and target Shadow Demon, and there were times where Ninja Boogie was fast enough to get disruption, disruption off on off. himself. Boom, shotgun missed. You know, that's a huge loss for you not be able to yeah. take somebody out of the fight instantly. And he still got away with the BKB TP until yeah. the Hex debut. Yeah, the, the Hex was particularly important. Um, Moon was such a big part of this game. It felt like Optic had to be able to win so many team fights to be able to have uh, an opportunity yeah. to win the game, right? And that's what we were talking about. Having a win condition sure. here just felt like it was like, well, Morphling carries us. And that that just does not... Which, I mean, it, it, it again, I don't think... I think that could have happened here. Yeah, I mean, they I had the ability yeah. to... They had a lot of wave clear. They had the ability to prolong this game almost indefinitely. Uh, I think you have to be a little bit suspect if you're Mineski. And I, you know, on the side, this is the second series that, we've, that I've been talking about this. You have to look at, obviously, the best hero on paper in this situation, but you also have to look at how your team wins games. 33 on Underlord is... Abed on Razor and Viper is not how Fnatic wins games. 33 on Underlord is not how Optic wins games. All right, okay. Uh, we're headed to a break right now after a uh, thoroughly perf good performance from Moon in that game. 18 on the board from him. As Mineski take game number one. There's a sense, though, a feeling that maybe they just squeaked away with that one. We'll see how Optic bounce back in game number two after the break. Got the damage and Pike gets got the kills. Double for him. No buybacks coming in from Mineski. They don't want to find it just yet. The Brumas split's going to wear off. CCNC looking for the torrent to connect. It will not do so, but Mushi so low on life. CCNC's hit him once. Doesn't happen. They get it instead. From the rest of Optic, Aegis cracks, Moonbolt back, so does Nyx Assassin. The numbers now in favor of Fineski. They have to get this Divine Rapier out. Let's see, see and see. He doesn't really hit the mark. In fact, he got hexed up. He hasn't been able to swing. Now pull him back down again. The dust comes down. See, see and see. This rapier will be lost. He's got no mana. He's got nothing. Get in there. Wow. He's dead. Yeah, I'm dead. 